In this video, I'm going to show you how to power a Garmin with a power tool battery. So I've got this regular Milwaukee uh, 2 amp hour, and you could add, you could put a 6 or 8 or a 10 amp hour battery on there, no big deal. This handy little plug converts the wires for you for uh, to fit the socket on the battery. You can get those all over the place. This one I like because it has a disconnect on it. The one I purchased has a transformer, and the reason I have a transformer is I want to send 12 volts out for more 12 volt devices. You can see this transformer can run up to 180 watts, 18 to 20 volt input with an output of 12 volts at 15 amps. So I have my positive and negative coming in at 18, and I've got a positive and a negative coming out at 12, and they're going over here to my battery protector. You can see this device has a V in and a V out, so this is our input side. We send 12 in, and we also send 12 out. Keep in mind that this can be set to use any battery, not just have a 12 volt system working on it. Let's carry on with the circuit. So I've got a negative node, and I've got a positive node. You'll notice there's a couple of extra fuses here. Don't let that confuse you. It's just that I've got positive output, coming from our battery protector and it's coming in with the negative and the positive and then one black wire goes off to the Garmin negative and the other one uh, the other positive red goes off to the Garmin positive and then the other negative is just coming over here to this USB negative and positive so I went with this style so that I could bypass having an extra switch just less wiring and you want to have a USB like this so you can charge a phone or add extra lighting or keep a GoPro going. Okay, so hopefully we haven't complicated the circuit too much. You can see the Garmin wiring harness as it comes with it from the factory. The nice thing about this harness, it's simple, just black and red. That's your 12 volts. And then this blue and brown, those are for the comm lines, which I'm not using, and I'll just have to heat shrink those later. One of the unique things about the Garmin, as you can see, it can take 10 to 20 volts with 3 amp max. So what that means is we can go straight from the battery straight into this device. So on their harness, they include this 3 amp fuse. This other fuse is for that uh, USB socket. Let me show you what their fuse looks like. Okay, so I've got the Garmin fuse here. And you can see that they give you a little 3 amp, looks like 250 uh, volt, just a little glass tube fuse. So because their cable harness already comes pre-fused, you could just hook the positive and negative of that right up to the battery. You could cut these cords right here or disconnect them, whatever you want to do. And you've got a 3 amp fuse, so it's going to give protection to that device as far as overcurrent protection. Now let's talk about what this device provides as protection. Well, we talked about that you could first raw dog the battery over to here and go 18 volts, right? I could bypass this transformer if I didn't need anything else 12 volts down the line. So I could set that aside. I could bring my battery directly to the positive and negative input side of this. But now I need to make the adjustments for the high voltage cutoff for an 18 volt battery, the low voltage cutoff, and so on and so forth. So what do those settings look like? Right now, I'm saying if somebody were to put more than 12 and a half volts to this input side, it will turn off that relay if you put more than 12.6. So I know some lithium chargers, maybe they put out 14 or alternators, whatever, something in charging mode, this thing's gonna disconnect and not let any power go down. So my over voltage is at 12 and a half. Now my low voltage disconnect is at 12. So you can change those. First off, there's two modes on each button. Double click says that's, and then I can go positive or negative. You gotta wait for three seconds and it will come back. So you can set the low voltage uh, disconnect. So as soon as this battery stops putting out 12, that thing's gonna shut off. Well right now that 12 and a half if I hold it, then it flashes. Uh, let's kick that back down to 12.5. Uh, 
and we'll let that sit. Okay. There's my 12 and then that other uh, uh, for my low voltage, right? And then I'll hold it back down. And uh, I don't know why that's going up to 13.1, but I'm setting it at uh, 12.6 and we'll just let it chill on that. Okay. And then this other button over here, I can push it once and that's 0.2. Let me explain this one to you. So right here at 12, when I'm at 12, I have to make sure that this battery is going to put out 12.3 because the disconnect is at 12 and this is saying you cannot reconnect until it's higher than that plus your 12 so I got to be at 12 12.2 12 wouldn't allow it I got to be at 12 plus whatever I set this to so how do I set that I'm going to hold it for three seconds and this is a different setting so I'm going to let that one go I'll talk about that one in just a second I'm going to double click and there's my point two. Now I can kick this up or I can kick it down. And I've got to wait three seconds to take the setting. And what will happen is I got to be at 12.3 in order to be able to reconnect the setting. At least 12.3. Because it's saying that if you get to 12.2 I'll shut down. Okay. Well what was that other setting on the hold on this side? That's one minute. That's how long it takes to reconnect after it's been disconnected i can't figure out how to shorten that one there's not a way to move the decimal point so if you watch i'll turn this off i'll turn it on now i have no power on the garmin so the way this board's designed right now or the way i only know how to operate it i have to wait for one minute for everything else to power up so let me talk about a couple of things while that's happening you'll hear a little click you'll see the light go on because i have power here but this relay has shut it off, so I do not have power right there for one minute. So let's talk about a couple of things. So one of them is, I've got a meter here. Might be hard to do this with two hands, but let me turn the light on. And I should be able to show you. I'm gonna have to open these. Okay, you can see that on the meter, I'm not getting anything. And now that relay, you heard it click, it just turned on. And now I'm getting my 12.2 volts out. Now we'll come over here on this side and look at it. And I'm getting 12.1 in. Hopefully that gives you some ideas of what's going on. So you've got your high voltage disconnect. And I don't know why it moves up and down on the screen. It just has some tolerance in the system. Whatever they've got programmed on, I'm guessing that little chip right there. So let's do a quick little recap. I can go battery straight to Garmin because it says it can take 20 volts. This needs to be fused, which their negative and positive does come with a fuse and it's already fused at three amps. So I can go straight across and forget all these shenanigans. Now, if I do that, this better be rated for 20 volts. And when it, when I put 20 volts on it, it better put the right out voltage out for the USB. And I can't put any other 12 volt devices on, on it coming out. On this, I could, if it's rated, it'll, it'll transform the power correctly. But you gotta remember, you have to turn this switch off even after the low voltage disconnect happens. After that low voltage disconnect happens, that's where it gets in trouble because this stays on and continues to use battery and over a course of maybe a couple hours or whatever that time is, it'll draw it down far enough and the charger won't be able to repair it. So remember to turn this off if this goes off. Now, if you don't need 12 volts anywhere else, don't use this, take this, Take the black and the red, put them directly into this device, and change all the settings. And how do we get those settings? We run our battery low, we measure what the 18 volts low is where it's ready to recharge, and when a battery's fully recharged, we put our meter on the positive and negative, and that becomes the high setting on it. So that's where you get your high and low. I don't care where you reconnect at. Maybe you want to reconnect with, maybe you add two volts to that. I don't know, whatever that number is, some people don't want to let it reconnect without a battery. You could set this really high 
so it won't allow it to reconnect without a fully charged battery within you know maybe less maybe 90 percent and then you put a new fresh battery on and it doesn't work after a minute you'll realize oh hey i need to go put a fresh battery on it would then reconnect and it'll run all day till it gets too low then disconnect but then it only allows for a fresh battery and that's why i've got this set low so you can put kind of a, a close to dead battery on it now I'm still working on these numbers, so don't take the high and low voltage here as what it's going to be. I'm just doing some testing on it today, and I'll get all this wiring cleaned up, get it in a box, and get this fish found, finder mounted on a special mount I'm working on so I can mount it on a float tube. And I'll be able to transfer it over to a boat. So I hope that helps. If you have questions, comments, uh, throw them in there. It's not a perfect system. I'm working on it. I think the community can help each other here. But I wanted to share what I knew about it, what I've discovered to make all this work. And uh, thanks for watching.